Images of jazz, urban, suburban, and way out over the horizon, beyond Hawk Ridge overlooking Lake Superior, as that last hawk disappears way up beyond the uh, special winds that blow the men. And just behind, the Yellow Jackets and a theme called Postcards. One of the composers is on the line with me, the Yellow Jackets are heading into Orchestra Hall, Minneapolis, at 8 o'clock Sunday night, part of their 50-city tour, and they'll be in uh, and on stage, on the mall at Orchestra Hall, Sunday night. That's tomorrow. And on the line with me is the composer of that theme, the co-composer, Jim Has. Jim, welcome in. It's good to meet you. How you doing? Well, I'm out of control, frankly. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's lovely music you have uh, put up there. What is the significance of the postcard theme? Well, basically, the whole album, the Four Corners album, has a theme of uh, traveling. And uh, we just uh, came up with a lot of compositions that, that made us feel good while we were traveling on airplanes or in a car or whatever. And we do a lot of traveling as a band, so we, we chose that theme for uh, our music on our new record. And uh, in doing that, we, we chose a lot of titles that have to do with, with traveling, including postcards. Well, I see another one there, Geneva or Geneva. It's either Geneva, Wisconsin, or... It's actually yeah. uh, Geneva, Switzerland. Ah, with Old Town <laughs> in the background and the lake there. Right. And, oh, what a what atmosphere. It's, Take uh, me there it now. It's a beautiful place. We played there in 1981 at the... Montreux Jazz Festival, and it was a place that left a, uh, quite an impression on me, so I, I did write a piece of music for that. Your instrument is the bass, uh, and uh, I might uh, ask you if there are any influences uh, uh, with regard to your bass playing, people you've listened to who also have structured and pioneered for the instrument. Well, there's, there are many. Uh, the list is endless. Uh, I can name a few. Uh, Charlie Mingus, uh, Paul Chambers, jo Jaco Pastorius. Uh, Unfortunately, he passed away recently, didn't yes. he? Yes. Yeah, I knew Jaco very well, and, and uh, uh, it's really uh, a shame that, that that had to happen, but uh, he's still with us in spirit, and uh, I find him to be m one of my strongest inspirations. Well, you're in a city right now that has contributed one of the great figures uh, in the bass field. Oscar Pettiford spent a great deal of his life in his early years here in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area. A great bass player. Yes, indeed. Tricketism, blues in the closet, and other. Right. Well, your, um, your team worker in writing is Russell Ferrante. Uh, he's uh, featured at keyboards. Who are some of the other colleagues uh, in your band? Well, we have... Uh a uh, gentleman that plays alto and soprano sax. His name is Mark Russo. And uh, we have a drummer in the band on the Four Corners record, and his name is William Kennedy, and he's our newest member. This, uh, this organization has a certain direction. Who's really the uh, pilot uh, and the guide? Well, actually, there is no one pilot. I, we like to consider it a team, and... Uh, we, we do get together on, on the, the material as far as uh, what we decide on to put on the records. And uh, everyone does write in the band. Um, so we all share in all the, all the music and all the decisions. It's a democratic situation, and uh, we're all responsible for uh, shaping the music. Well, let's talk about the shaping of the music. What are your... What are your objectives? What's your criteria? What are you thinking about? Is it just the inner muse or what? Uh, actually, on the new record, and uh, this sort of took a new direction, uh, we began to question uh, our roots, and we went back and started listening to a lot of music from the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Uh, I'm talking about the big band era in the 40s. Uh, I'm also talking about people like John Coltrane, Miles Davis, Eric Dolphy, uh, Thelonious Monk, um, Charlie Mingus, uh, all all the uh, uh, 
predominant artists from those periods and listening to uh, the music that they composed. And from there, we, we felt like we had a, a stronger base of roots, uh, being that now we're writing music in the 80s. We don't want to lose sight of those roots, and uh, we want to combine the old with the new, uh, the old stylings of music and the new technology that we have today in the 80s. And uh, we'll probably progress in the 90s and so on and so forth. So our goal is to muse the, the two eras and continue to uh, compose music uh, for people that uh, are interested in uh, contemporary instrumental music. Well, that certainly is a mighty uh, mission that you're on. <laughs> and uh, it's interesting that... Um, you combine and think about uh, the root and the and the history and the repertoire against the new technology. It should produce some mighty colorful music. Yeah, and uh, we're getting ready to uh, do a new record. It should be coming out next year at some point in the spring. And uh, I think we'll have some more way out kind of stuff for you. <laughs> all right, I'll be standing by with all of the rest of the uh, followers of the Yellow Jackets. Thank you for joining us, Jimmy, and I hope your R&R is going well because it looks as if you're going to have to continue on that 50-city tour. Yes, we, we still have another three weeks left, and uh, uh, it's just a, we feel a privilege to be out here and playing for the people. That's another good thing that, that comes with the territory as far as playing music and doing records, and we want to just get out and play for the folks live.